Oh, this feels so different now. Mm -hmm. Not fat yet. IFBB Pro Mike Sommerfeld wird dir präsentiert von Climax. Deinem Profi für Fitness Essentials. Climax. Because it's converging, that should pretty much keep your triceps out of it. And then honestly, to keep the triceps out of the most, I just focus as much as you can on the upper arm. Okay. So meaning as you're coming, and especially as you come to the finish, just think about bringing your upper arm across more so than you are about up. Yeah, it's like that makes sense. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Yep. Good. Just a little longer squeeze at the top, and that's just for warming up. I'm not going to have you do every one like that. Nice hard squeeze. Perfect. Would you try to like force your shoulder blades to stay together or coming slightly? If they move on the way up, just let them move. I like the feeling, I, I kind of like at the bottom of every rep, I like to feel like I'm really pulling them back mm -hmm. and if anything, kind of like reset. Um, but then honestly, I don't think about them a whole lot after that, especially yep. with how you're doing. Like if you ever, you know, you get like ever trained with normal people, you have some people where it's literally, they just finish reps exactly. like this, I'm, then I'll really work on anchoring them back. But if you're just contracting with your pecs, that shoulder's gonna probably move a little bit. Yeah, let's go like two more. Nice hard squeeze. Yeah, one more. Good. My chest still feels sore from posing. Yeah, that's funny. Crazy. That's funny. That's good. That means you're hitting the uh, poses hard. I was posing like <laughs> posing like your life depended on it. Uh -huh. Oh, this feels so different now. Mm -hmm. Stop for one second. Mess around with, bring it down to the bottom and stop for a second. Pause for a second. No, try like, moving your elbows. Oh, down, down, down? Just, just try that. Yep. And mess around between those two spots. I think where you're at looks good. I just wanted you to try and see how that feels. It feels weird. Mm -hmm. This feels more comfortable, but yeah. I can feel that my chest contracting harder mm -hmm. doing this way. Yep. I will be... 20, 25% weaker, but mm -hmm. I can feel that my chest is way more active like that. Let's work with that then. Definitely. We can use less Good. weight mm -hmm. and get definitely better contraction. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's go like two more like that. I'll be pumped after this one. Good. Nice. Mm -hmm. Great. This advice, guys, is priceless. I talked to the judges and I got incredible good feedback, very precise feedback. I know exactly what to do. And the moment right now is absolutely perfect for me to listen and learn from one of the best coaches in the world how to do that. Like, what kind of steps do I need to do to develop the finished new product? Obviously, Neil will design my workout protocols, but all these small details like arm position, movement path and strength curves and stuff like that, like the nerdy stuff, he's the perfect guy for that. I'm perfect for the nerd stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not fat yet? Yeah, I'm getting a little bit like water <laughs> yeah. slightly. Yeah. I'm like two pounds over stage weight now. Yeah. I had a hard time like coming back to eat to yeah. eat. Mm -hmm. I'm not the shit food guy. Yeah. So I basically I had a salad post yeah. Olympia and it was like absolutely fine. Yeah. And now it's like eating rice again. Oh yeah. It nice. Yeah. Weird. It's nice eating more. I only ever did my first show was the only time I ever like binged like an idiot. And then after that I got more normal. The only thing I ever used to crave after shows I would always want my first thing would just be berries. And then after that would be sushi. And then I'd be pretty good after that. 2013, I won the first German national show, uh -huh. and I, I was waiting for food for like six months. Yeah. And uh, Ulrich Oehmann, the photographer, uh -huh. called me and said, hey, are you down for a shooting in Miami? I was like, yeah, of course. 
And then I realized, oh, I need to stay on diet for another two weeks. Yeah. Then the first time in the U.S. in Miami, yeah. like 11 years ago, yep. I was buying sweets for six hundred dollars yeah i gave all my clothing to homeless people yeah packed it all in my backpack perfect <laughs> and i added 70 pounds in 10 days yeah wow. i was not able to walk anymore because yeah. it was so full of water wow i will not do it again but it was worth it yeah that's intense that's like i think my first row i was like i think i was up probably i was up like 30 pounds in a week mm -hmm. and i was the same thing i felt so bad i was Feels like oh my hard. gosh it's like i can't ever do this again so like getting out of breath going up and down stairs my wife's like what are you doing I literally the same thing. Like as soon as I was done, I went right to the grocery store, and I think I spent like four hundred dollars at like Whole Foods just right away. Because I, I had one deal with my wife. I was like, I'm going here. I'm like, don't say shit with whatever I buy. Just let me buy whatever I want. And I would literally then the worst that was the worst thing you could do because then even once you buy all of it, I'm like, yes. I gotta eat all of it. And you then, get so out every, of control. So every, fast. Yeah, and honestly, it was like pretty normal. Like I, would, I still had to work, so I'd like work during the day and eat kind of normal. Then I get home and I would just sit there and eat myself till like my stomach hurt. I would literally just cry about my stomach hurting every night. My wife would be like, Why don't you stop? And I'm like, I can't. Uh. This will feel weird. Nice and control into the bottom. There we go. Hard squeeze. Really good. Hard squeeze. Good. Smooth out of the bottom. Two more. Control. There it is. One. Good. Nice. Wow, these machines are amazing. One day I will have my own gym. So basically said, don't focus too much on all the small details. As long as you hit it hard, get the stretch and finish it strong. Yeah, I you're think like 80% is that like good to go. Because it's well, the other thing too, the, so the, what I mean by that is, so in this position, I do think the bottom is most important. And, and that is why we have loaded there. But so the two things where I say there's, there's so much stuff going on there that I think people mess up is one, most of the time, this is obviously we have the option, but in most presses, the bottom is just the most joint torque. It's the most challenge because the dumbbells out here and not stacked. So people will say, oh, the stretch is the most important. And I would say, well, have you controlled for it? Meaning like, are we, have we ever taken it to stretch and compared different amounts of joint torque? Or does it just seem like it's the most important because that's also where the exercise is heavy. A lot of it is like people are comparing positions, not controlling for joint torque. Mm -hmm. So that's like one of the number one things when we talk about loaded stretch stuff, I think there's issues with. And I've always said like in general, if you look at any muscle, like how much it can lengthen and how much it can shorten, I do think biasing, <laughs> more towards the mid and lengthened range is probably where you have the most opportunity to grow. But it's like, then people take that to the extreme of saying like, oh, let's do like lengthened partials and things yeah, like that. And it's like, and I don't think that, I, I think if you, if I really had to make a strong argument, I think the mid range is probably the most important just for probably where you have, the muscles are capable of producing the most intramuscular force. Mm -hmm. But if you compare like the extreme ends of it, so if you said a muscle all the way short or a muscle all the way lengthened, you're really, really weak in both those positions as well too. Like just from a muscle standpoint, not from like an exercise standpoint. And, um, but you're the most weak in the short position. So that's why I said, I kind of like the bias more towards the mid and length and range. So again, all of it now is like, that's, I don't like people that spend, I shouldn't say that. I feel like it's a little bit of a waste to really try and understand the physiology because people say, oh, it's for the, everyone was saying stretch mediated hypertrophy it's is the whole a thing. Right now, I know. But then honestly, even the people, if people aren't paying attention, we've now realized, and even the stretch people were saying, oh, we realize it's not stretch mediated hypertrophy. Maybe it's actually just the stretch position mm -hmm. because technically stretch mediated hypertrophy, a muscle has to actually be at its full, full length. And all that was based off of like, when they take like a bird or something and like stretch a muscle as far as it could possibly go. And that almost never happens in the human body. Yep. So like, okay, maybe it's a different mechanism. And that's yeah. the whole point. It's like, well, it's who cares? It's not a human, it's like Yeah, and that's, the, and that's the whole thing too. It's like, well, who cares what the mechanism is? I'd rather just compare, like I like comparing things, but getting too fixated on why it's actually happening, I think tends to be a waste of time. Mm -hmm. okay, so like one more, take your time, squeeze. Good. Nice. That feels great. <laughs> All the trip was worth it. Perfect. <laughs> 
same thing. Take your time. That was perfect with the bomb. Nice and smooth. Hold that bottom. Hard press. Stick with it, stick with it, stick with it. <coughs> yep. Nice work. So much harder when you like push your elbows in front. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, and that's one of those things. Honestly, like chest stuff, everyone gets a little too attached to that, you know, where it's like, I think your, your arm path Anywhere from here to here is fine. So it's mm -hmm. not like one's way better than the other. You know, I think when you're trying to get a little bit more upper stuff, yep. being a little tucked makes more sense. So that's why I just kind of adjusted it there. But all of guys that like, they prefer a little bit higher on everything. And so it's like, I always say try both because it's not like a right or wrong thing in my opinion. And, um, and again, especially if you get better sensation, more for kind of upper, you know, as you have a little bit more tucked, then that can be a great reason to do it. It just feels not as comfortable as like yeah. doing the upper because my body is used to yeah, do exactly. that. Yeah, exactly, that's the say, it's just not used to but it. But I can feel it's way more effective just like put my elbows more inwards. Yeah. And as long as I can use less weight, that's always good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I should not say that in camera, but it's actually, it's actually <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, true. So I'll see how you go and then we'll tweak it as needed. When we get heavier, I'll just hand you one. You want to do presses or fly? A little fly. bit more fly. Slide your hips forward for me just a little bit. There you go. Nice big arch. There you go. Mm -hmm. Good. Would you turn your wrist slightly inwards or like? Comfort. I generally like to be, you to keep them kind of the same position the whole time. And it's generally based on where it feels best kind of at the top since you're bending your elbow. Yep. Same, keep this tall, real smooth in the finish. Drive that bicep right into the peg. There we go. Smooth, let that arm a little straighter to the top, squeeze in, squeeze in, there we go. Another one, keep this tall. Go, go, go. Squeeze in, squeeze in, squeeze in. I'll get you there. Let's go. One more. Come on. Keep this tall. Nothing changes. Now you just think about that chest. Get that bicep into the chest. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. There we go. Nice. I got this one. Oh. Nice set. That was good. Yeah, definitely. My chest is so full. Fuck. I, like, it's basically the second exercise we do, and I learned so many new, incredible good things. Next season, next off season is going to be great. I can use less weight, meaning less pressure on my joints, meaning better joint health, less unnecessary weight, unnecessary energy wasting, like so many good news. Oh. Nice. Two pounds over, over weight limit. When we're talking about stretching, like ISO stretches and stuff like that, I mean, the most effective way to stretch is like with weights, 
in full range of motion uh -huh. and stuff like that. But if you stop not in a deep, deep stretch all the times, like you lock it here mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. you don't get the in like intense stretch. Mm -hmm. Would you say that it's beneficial to do a, an exercise like the pack flies, mm -hmm. super stretched out, like elbows bent inside, big chest, stretch it out. And the other one like that, like focusing on the strong part, like mm -hmm. not as deep, but yeah. stronger. That can be a good way to go about it. But just in general as well too, I always think about is um, like how many muscles can you really deep, deep stretch like that? Uh, and generally a muscle has to cross over two joints most of the time to actually feel like that. So like think about quads. Like whenever you train quads, like most normal quads, it's not like you ever, you can't really fully stretch your quad that same way. Mm -hmm. And obviously quads grow fine. You know, so it's like if you want, in general practice, if you want to take something as far as you can, I think flies, because you have more ability to change your shoulder joint, can be a good place to do it. And then for something like a press, I think the bigger thing is I don't really think you have to go to that deep, deep stretch to really get, you know, maximal benefit or whatever. I'm not talking about hypertrophy stimulus. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm talking about like mobility, stretching and joint yeah. health. Yeah. I think would you do like a stretching routine every morning or just focusing on full range of motion? Um, I think there's things you can do outside of training that I do think are beneficial. But I'm not, I'm not as big of a fan of like what you would traditionally call like stretching. I don't think there's anything wrong with stretching. But I think if you, like you passively taking yourself there, so like if the difference is like, can I go in a doorway and can I stretch my pecs as far as I can? You know, you're using the doorway to get to that range of motion. Whereas if I think of doing some sort of, you can call it an exercise, whatever you want, but if you do something where you actively, like this is me pulling my traps, you know, retracting my traps as far as I can, driving my upper arms as far back as I can and holding that position, like I think that has benefit. You know, so I like to do things that are more active end range stuff. Um, and so some things I'll either do that kind of, you know, is my warm up sometimes when I'm training or I'll do it at a separate time of day as well too. Uh, and I do think that's massively important for just long-term health and function. You know, because again, you don't, you don't have to take your, lots of times the limit of your stretch will be the limit of a joint. You know, and again, going as, as far back as I was going there, like when I'm doing this, like I'm pulling myself in there. There's nothing, you, you, I think it's pretty much impossible to pull yourself into a position that's unhealthy, like using your own muscles or whatever. But if I get this, even if I do this and pull myself in there and go with 30 pounds or 40 pounds and hold it, I'm not saying that like you're, the body's resilient and it's not gonna like hurt you from doing it a couple times. But again, at the same time, then I think you're losing the benefit. I think so much of mobility and flexibility, like that people look at the stretch side of it. I think the other side of it is like when I'm doing this, first off, it's way harder in my opinion than static stretching. That's the main reason people don't like to do this. Mm -hmm. But also part of mobility and flexibility is what the muscles on the other side of the joint are doing. So when I do that, I do feel a pec stretch, but I also feel an intense cramping contraction from traps, you know, some rear delt type stuff, some rotator cuff type stuff. And I think that's the thing that preserves mobility and range of motion even more than the stretch is taking muscles as shortened and then contracted as they go. Anytime you fully shorten or fully contract something, something on the other side is also getting stretched. Um, the main reason people don't want to do that because it's way harder than just stretching. It's kind of tedious. What a perfect answer. Oh. So guys, we're going to continue doing the... Uh morning routine, mobility, cardio, stretching thing. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Love that machine. Mm -hmm. <sighs> like it. The, the setup right now is like, I can really like aggressively Bang, control mm -hmm. the back. Yep. Again, come on. Dry. Finish, 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 finish. Nice. Oh, that, that was hard. Yeah, let's go. I think that was the perfect last rep. My, my chest felt almost empty, like numb. <laughs> 